station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready for the event. European Space Agency and participants, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Okay, so oh, station. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Station, this is the Nobel Prize Museum in Stockholm. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. Welcome loud and to clear. the International Space Station. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and uh, fantastic to see you. We are here at the Nobel Prize Museum in Stockholm with an amazing audience and Nobel Prize laureates, Professor Krauss and Professor Bawendi, and they are ready and eager to ask you questions. So please. Hi, Andreas Ferenc here. Actually, I, I, I would be very interested in such a levitating micro. Um, uh, I understand that, that you are doing quite some research uh, at the space station. What kind of research is that? It's, a, it's a very, very wide range of uh, research. Just in the last week or so, I've been uh, looking at brain cells and how they uh, age. I've been working with our biofabrication facility up here, which essentially is a 3D printer capable of printing uh, human tissue or uh, human organ equivalents. Um, I've also been uh, studying giant lightning strikes in the upper atmosphere called blue jets and red sprites. And I've been uh, just today uh, giving a lot of different types of blood samples, urine samples, saliva samples as part of uh, a few different physiological studies. So the research up here really uh, spans the gamut from physics, chemistry, biology, human physiology, material science, almost anything you can imagine. Cool, really, really broad. And what, what kind of uh, questions uh, is this research being driven by? Uh, what is your favorite question you would like to answer? Well, I mean, some of it is, uh, some of the research that really fascinates me are the, you know, the big questions, uh, like the uh, alpha magnetic spectrometer that's on the outside of the space station, uh, that's really trying to look at, at uh, the universe, uh, how it formed and how it's evolved. Uh, also the question of life. Uh, later on in this mission, if we're lucky, we'll be going on a spacewalk and one of the tasks we'll be doing is to collect biological samples from the outside of the space station near some of the vents to see if any microorganisms microorganisms might have escaped through those vents and might still be surviving on the outside of the space station. So understanding life and the type of environments that it can survive in, I think also is, is fascinating because it, it goes to the core of the question is of what is life, uh, how did life arise, and, and what are the uh, limitations if there are any to life? Truly exciting. These are really, really fundamental questions. But but is there anything that can actually benefit uh, us uh, here in our in our everyday life, uh, kind of from from the research you are you are doing? Any any chance? Certainly. I mean, it's kind of hard to predict uh, when we're talking about the fundamental science that we're doing up here, but I'm certain that in the future uh, that'll contribute uh, as well. But we're also doing a lot of applied uh, research up here, which can have a direct benefit uh, on Earth. Uh, in particular, we're looking at a lot of different uh, sustainable technologies. Uh, at the moment, we're recycling uh, about 95% of our water on board the space station. Uh, and so understanding what it takes to create a closed loop life support system up here uh, so that we can be truly sustainable uh, is something that can also benefit us uh, on Earth as we transition to a greener and more circular economy in the future. Very interesting. This sounds really convincing that it's it can be important for us, actually it will be important for us. You yourself uh, are also kind of part of all those experiments. Uh, how does the human body physiology cope with uh, with these uh, kind of very unusual conditions uh, 
Well, our bodies are certainly uh, impacted by weightlessness uh, and many other factors, including space radiation that we're exposed to. Um, you know, some of the some of the things we, we understand quite well, the, the loss of muscle mass, the loss of bone density that occurs because we're not using our muscles and our bones in weightlessness. Uh, and we counteract that uh, through exercise two hours every day. Uh, but there are other things that where we're still learning how our immune system uh, is impacted by stress factors. Um, you know, we're, we're studying that. Uh, we're looking at how our uh, how the um, blood is redistributed uh, in our bodies, uh, which can cause increased pressure in the brains, which can affect our vision. Uh, these things are, are newer and are still uh, being studied and we're still learning. Um, so there are many things that uh, uh, we're still studying when it comes to human physiology in space. That'll be important as we travel further into space for as a first step back to the moon and hopefully in the not too distant future onwards to Mars. Really cool. Actually, I would be very interested if we would have time. We don't, but if we would have time, what kind of exercises are you doing there? Uh, certainly not weightlifting, I, I guess, right? But anyway, let's uh, let's just go to a more interesting question. I, I've heard that actually uh, you uh, you also brought some medal with you, some very very special medal. Uh, um, is it true? And and could you possibly show it to us? Uh, it is true. I uh, I brought with me uh, the Nobel Medal. Wow! Sport one. <laughs> I have it here. So Let me see if I can <laughs> open it. Truly impressive. And this is the medal of whom, actually? And this is the medal of whom, actually? I gotta be careful; <laughs> things don't fly away from me. Um, this is uh, the medal that the Danish physicist Nils Bohr won. Right. Right. Thank you very much, Andreas. Actually, I, I would now like to hand over the stage uh, to my uh, uh, colleague here, Professor Bawendi, who would also like to ask you some questions. Hi, Andreas. This is Muji Bawendi. Um, you've been in the space station for some time now. Is it the way you expected that it would be? I mean, I see a lot of wires everywhere. Yeah, th this is um, this this is my second mission, so I, I knew what I was getting into when I, I came up here. But uh, it's definitely true. The first time I arrived uh, in 2015 for my first mission, uh, I was a little bit uh, surprised, uh, especially about the size of the space station. It's hard to truly understand how large the space station is. Um, it is an incredible laboratory that we have assembled uh, in space um, over the last 25 years. Uh, and to think that the first module was launched uh, in 1998 and that the space station has been permanently inhabited by astronauts since November 2000. So for more than 23 years, we've had a permanent presence up here on board the space station. I think that's amazing. And the space station has really grown to this magnificent laboratory, um, which unfortunately is uh, not so tidy looking as you've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> There's some samples of quantum dust that are actually on the outside of the space station uh, being tested for stability in outer space. Is that anything you have to do with? Do you like baby them or feed them or what do you do or with them, if anything? <laughs> well, our involvement is that in, in that experiment is to uh, help them get to the outside of the space station. So typically an experiment like that, we will uh, prepare uh, internally, load it onto uh, the slide table in the airlock, and then send it outside from where the uh, uh, robotic arm will pick it up and, and install it. Um, and then it runs uh, more or less autonomously once it's outside. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see how they behave when they come back to Earth. Um, when you're looking out on our planets, 
from space. Do you have any reflections and any any thoughts about the difference from when you're on Earth to when you're in space looking at Earth? Seeing the Earth uh, from space is, is truly magnificent. Uh, and a lot of things uh, run through your mind as, as you're looking at our beautiful planet. Uh, one thing is that you, you very quickly realize that it's one planet. It's not 195 or 200 different countries. It's one planet that we all share together. Um, and really, you don't see borders between countries. Um, and so you also realize that borders and countries, nation states, are, are something man-made, artificial in some way. And uh, therefore, that we're all just humans uh, living on the same planet. And if we could learn to live peacefully side by side, you know, many of our daily challenges and problems would disappear because they are also uh, man-made, unfortunately. Another thing you very quickly realize is that there's nothing that in any way resembles the Earth uh, anywhere near us. You know, the Earth is not only our home, it's our only home. Uh, and therefore, we have to protect it. There is uh, no other option for us if we damage the Earth. And so it's vitally important that we take care of, uh, of our home. Um, and then I say one third thing. Um, when you look out at the universe and you see these billions and billions of stars surrounding us, um, you also realize what an insignificant part of the universe we, we, we are. Um, and I think that's in some ways exciting because when something is as incredibly large as the universe, it must mean that there are so many exciting discoveries, so many exciting opportunities waiting for us out there uh, in the future. Um, and I think that's truly what's so fascinating about space exploration is that it, who knows what we'll find simply because of, of the enormity uh, of space. And, and so I think we have a lot of exciting uh, things to look forward to in the future, discoveries to be made. Super, that's incredible. I, and I think you've pretty much started answering my next question, is uh, which is, uh, what keeps you motivated? What, have, what has kept you motivated throughout your career? And do you have any special goals that you still want to accomplish as an astronaut? Well, I mean, I think, you know, what motivates me is is just the, the, the scientific questions of understanding the universe, understanding life uh, and our role in the universe. Um, and, you know, what, what, what excites me at the moment is, is the fact that we're ready to take the next step again. We're ready to go back to the moon, uh, hopefully this time to stay. Uh, and hopefully after that onwards to Mars. Uh, Mars is going to be incredibly exciting. It'll hopefully help us answer some of these questions about how life arose uh, and if there ever was life on Mars. Uh, it's, Mars is certainly one of the uh, better places to, to search for life outside of the Earth. And so I think we have a very, very exciting uh, future ahead of us in space exploration, and I hope to be part of it. Great, I can't wait to hear the, the wait, I can't wait for the answer on the issue about life on Mars. Now, this is a question that uh, we've been asked quite a bit also for our own uh, science. What is your advice to uh, young students with a passion for space science and exploration? What would you say to them? I would say, you know, follow your hearts, do what uh, interests you, uh, but at the same time, be flexible, grasp those opportunities that arise because you never know which path in life, life will lead you to your goal. It's, it's very rarely a straight line. It's usually curved and usually there are surprises along the way, uh, surprises that will positively impact your life. Uh, in my own case, you know, I was always uh, fascinated by space exploration. It's what I wanted to do. I became an aerospace engineer with the goal of becoming an astronaut. But uh, along the way, I, I got offered a job in the oil industry, and I ended up working a couple years on uh, oil rigs uh, off the coast of uh, Congo and Angola. Um, and if I hadn't taken that, uh, the, that opportunity, I probably never would have been selected as an astronaut because to be an astronaut, you also have to have some practical operational experience. Uh, and working in the oil field gave me that, uh, even though I never would have expected it. Uh, so, you know, follow your goals, but don't be afraid to, to grasp the uh, opportunities that arise along the way. How 
fascinating. Something so different actually can be applied to what you're doing there in outer space. Well, Andreas, do you have any questions for us? I do. I, I would love to hear your opinion on the state of our knowledge or understanding of nature. How far are we? Do we understand most of, of, of the universe or can we expect any groundbreaking discoveries that might fundamentally change our understanding of the universe of life and everything around us? I take that. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, very kind of you. <clears throat> it's, it's a, it's uh, well, a, I my, my 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 answer would be that we are at the very beginning. So <laughs> the more we learn, the more we know how much we don't know, and uh, I, I I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty pretty confident that uh, big discoveries are ahead of us uh, in in several areas of science and technology, and and uh, I think it's it's an extremely exciting time that we are heading and I can only encourage all young people with some interest in science and in uh, having some curiosity to move into this field and and uh, join us and uh, eventually then carry on once we cannot anymore. I couldn't say it any better. We're just scratching the surface. Well, I, I certainly appreciate that uh, that answer because that uh, helps to motivate me and hopefully will also motivate uh, and inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. Excellent. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Andreas Morgensen, for taking uh, the time to talk with us. Uh, I know you are extremely busy. Uh, so. Um, Thank you for that, and I hope that you can hear a very warm applaud from the Earth. Up to you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. I appreciate the chance to, to, to speak to two Nobel laureates, and congratulations on winning uh, the ultimate prize in science. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to the European Space Agency and all participants. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.